Okay, God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brother Jonathan Kale, and I'm going to now share about paradise. This pretty much is weighing down to like the one of the last couple of videos, if not the last video. Anything else I'm going to just brush up and explain further details about what, um, you know, why people, I'm, I'm going to make another video um, specifically catered to why people are seeing um, souls um, in, in, in hell, okay? And when I say in hell, I don't just merely mean the grave, but I mean in torment, which you guys already think exists, but doesn't. And I'm going to explain what that means why they see it and why they also see people currently in heaven why they see people who say that they saw the father on the right side of the throne things of that nature i'm going to explain all these things okay because it's not that it's false but it's that we have to be careful with knowing prophetic prophecy prophesying and I think when people explain these experiences, many people just look at it as an encounter, but they they take away from the prophetic part regarding the encounter. A lot of these are prophetic encounters, and I'm going to explain realms and how there are different realms. I'm going to explain how Hollywood has been influenced by spirits to also create, you know, these backdrops and things that look like they're, you know, maybe look like you're in Africa, but you're really in L.A. because of these backdrops. The Satan does this also. And, um, you know, he, he I've, I've seen a, a, a documentary on, on um, Netflix that I'll never forget. Um, where a woman said that she went to heaven and she asked God, like, like who comes here? He said, everybody. Um, and I'm paraphrasing. And then she was like, well, what about Hitler? And he was like, yes. So I'm going to explain, you know, all of this, the falsehood of it, the truth of it, because all of it's not to be thrown away <coughs> and treated as false. And all of this not to be received. Um, and we need to not um, look at <coughs> all these testimonies as if they're as qualified. <coughs> Sorry, I got allergies. As if they're as qualified as the Holy Scriptures. And a lot of and the dangers of YouTube show up when we're not able to engage with one another about why this is not looking the same as the holy scriptures or why it does look similar to the holy scriptures and you know and 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 and, and the reasons for it and what scripture would be found in or i mean because you have to understand when you're looking at isaiah when you're looking at ezekiel when you're looking at jeremiah ezekiel when you're looking at like these people actually had these they, they didn't just merely prophesy, but they had illustrations, okay? So, uh, me being an artist, I can also um, detect, but from the first of all, from the glory of God's goodness given to me, like it's all his glory, um, but, but he shares his wisdom and he shares his, um, his, his mind. When with the mind of Christ, he shares it with others. So I really don't want to make this video about that. So I'm going to get off of that. <sighs> but that's pretty much going to be what's going to sum up um, the videos that have to deal with these spiritual encounters, realms, resurrection, death, creation, 
Judgment Day. Like all that stuff coincides and you can't mess up on any of it because you'll mess up on one of them. Like if you mess up on one, you'll mess up on the all of it. So you have to it all has to be in sync and um, and it can't be uh, silly and stupid sounding and crazy, weird sounding that doesn't make sense to nobody like people being alive and dead at the exact same time all because you want to hold on to a parable that you don't want to be a parable even though when Abraham said um, what he said at the end of that parable uh, to Lazarus to the rich man rather um, contradicted uh, the resurrection of the dead be it Matthew 27 52 and 53 uh where the it says the the saints that slept arose or the contradiction of um jerry's daughter um and how she arose uh from death also the widow's son and also the other lazarus and i explained in the past that the name Lazarus means God helps and these were the two parallels of both Lazaruses one was a literal reenactment or a literal occurrence and the other was a um, figurative um, parallel opposite in a story explaining um, what what opposes each other God helps okay when 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 Lazarus was not helped by anything but a dog licking his wounds and on the opposite someone who gets all of their self-help self desires selfish self-centeredness and and where you go Okay, and where he goes, no one is gone anywhere at this moment. Um, now, for those who want to say, well, what about the thief on the cross? This is why I'm making this video. So let's hop to it. Luke 23:43. Wow, it opened straight to it. My God, actually one, one uh, page away. Okay, so Luke 23:43. This is how it reads. So this is going to be a teaching explaining about paradise, where it is, who's there, and what state you are in when you're there. That's what this teaching is going to be entirely based on. Luke 23, 43, starting with verse uh, 39, I'm going to start with. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now, what needs to be understood is when the thief on the cross said to Jesus, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. The reason why the thief on the cross said this is because he understood the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. He understood when God brings his kingdom or when God kingdom is set forth to be received it will be at a different time and that he was not going to go straight there where 
what in what he was expecting. You understand? He was expecting to die. He was expecting to um to he was expecting what most expected out of death in that time, which was to be sleep, which was to be unconscious, which was to be lifeless. I don't want to get out of track, but this is the reason why King Hezekiah, thanks to my sister Hannon, shout out to you for um, pointing this out. But this is the reason why King Hezekiah was so, um, so uh, remorseful and so uh, repented in his heart and fearful of God because of the extremities of facing death. Okay, not being alive and dead at the same time, which doesn't exist. Okay, not life after death, not night of the living dead, none of that. Okay, that is all uh, a lie. Um, and you know what's so sad is that many of you have heard about the Nipsey Hussle story, um, the Nipsey Hussle uh, situation. I just heard um, on social media, uh, YouTube, his mother saying that she sought out a medium. Now, she's supposed to be a woman of God, and I don't want to get too far off topic, but she's supposed to be a woman of God, and she sought out a medium. And what did this medium tell her? This medium said that immediately after Nipsey Hussle was gunned down, he went to Eric Holder. Meaning, she said his spirit, she doesn't understand that the spirit is the breath of life. See, most people don't understand that, okay? They think that the spirit and the soul is all the same or they don't think of it at all. They just say what they say because they don't put thought to these things. But she said that his spirit, she's supposed to be a Catholic, Christian, what have you, whatever. But she said that she sought out a medium and she said that medium said that she he his spirit went to Eric Holder, the shooter, and shook his hand. What is that implying? Life after death. What is that implying? That Nipsey Hussle is not genuinely dead, but that his body, his physical body, is over with. That's all that's trying to say and that's not the truth the real truth is that you need to be very serious about life and death to the point where you understand the complete polar opposites the complete polar opposites okay now um you see you see how the devil plays on this you see what i'm saying now anytime god shows what seemingly seems like life after death, it's not death at all. It's an inner outer body experience, which people are having. And they call it an NDE. I think the best reason why you can call it an NDE is because you seem like you were about to die because you just got shot in the head and then you saw Jesus or you just got shot in the head and then you see people uh, being tormented in the depths of the earth, hell. OK, um, or or another realm or whatever you have you. Right. And so these things seem to be what you think that you see. But to be to be totally honest with you, you were never dead, because if you were dead, your spirit would have exited out of the body. As James 226 says, it says. As the spirit is without body, as uh, as the spirit without the body is dead. So faith without works is dead. OK, so is faith without works really dead because the spirit without the body is. Is the spirit without the body really dead because faith without works is. So you need to determine which one is really dead. According to my scriptures, both are dead. According to yours, I don't know. But according to what I read, both are dead. And what is dead? OK, dead is when something is cut off and withers away, okay? But that's the first death. 
after that death, then it's tossed to the fire and is no more. That's the second death. Now, with that being said, we're going to move on. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Okay, Jesus is saying, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. As I said, the thief on the cross was expecting a certain time where he can embrace the kingdom of God, embrace the kingdom of heaven, or what have you, right? Right? He was expecting a certain time for that. This is the reason why Jesus said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And for this cause, I tell all the viewers right now, looking at you on the screen, that no one dies who goes to paradise. You are not dead if you go to paradise. I don't even care if your physical body has decomposed and dissolved your soul did not leave excuse me your spirit did not leave your soul because your spirit is the reason why you still have life okay your spirit is the reason why you still have life not your soul as i told you my brother i've never had an, a literal inner out of body experience i felt like i was going to have when i felt my soul raise out of my body but it went back down, okay? And I felt like I was coming out, but I didn't entirely come out. That's the most I got. I don't have nothing else for you, okay? And this was while I was in my bed as well. But I have a brother, and I have two brothers. My other brother saw um, my brother, Minister Sidney. His, his soul came out of his body, and he went straight into the depths of hell. And God showed him a whole entire different realm, just like these same saints of God who get on YouTube and explain what they've seen. But they are not seeing people in the grave, as scripture says, that they're asleep. OK. And that's talking about their souls, because that's what resurrects in the last day. OK. And that's what resurrects in the second trumpet. Excuse me. In the second resurrection. OK. The, the physical body is not what resurrects it says first corinthians 15 44 sown natural raised spiritual okay now now the reason why i say that he is alive is because how are you going to be lifeless in paradise these people are currently lifeless they're dead scripture says their thoughts perish. Okay. I'm going to go to that real quick. I'm going to find that. Bear with me. It says their thoughts perish. What is that? Psalms. Well, I'm just going to read a few right here. It says, uh, no, I'm going to, no, I'm going to go for it read it because I, I really want you guys to hear this and I don't want to take up a lot of time I'm seeing people make videos for three hours and they're wrong that's embarrassing that's very much vain um it's so embarrassing to find out how wrong you have been while extra confident in making videos for three long hours that is shameful. So I want to be quick and I want to be wise and I want to be humble. Okay. Uh, their thoughts perish. I'm going to have to Google it. Right now I can't find it. I have to be honest with you guys. I cannot find it. I need to get to the... To the um to the meat of the matter. Okay. So their thoughts perish. I just want you guys to have understanding. Whoa. I popped up quick. Their thoughts. Maybe I've typed that up too many times. 
146 Psalm, okay? It says, I'm going to read it. Okay? Now, it says, Psalm 146, verse 4. Into the ground on that very day, their plans be, uh, come to nothing. When they breathe their last, Okay, this one says his spirit departs, he returns to the earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. Okay. This is in King James. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to this to the to his earth. Um let me go back up. drop and that very day his thoughts perish okay his thoughts perish so if your thoughts are, have perished and I'm rolling with that the, the thoughts perish it's, it's a lot of other ones that are um, more closer to uh, the, the rawest form of, 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 of translation that continue to say thoughts rather than plans but when 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 your thoughts perish that's a that's a lack of consciousness you understand that's a lack of consciousness even if you were to have um dementia even if you were to have um uh this other this other um problems that that happen with your your, your memory uh uh I, I can't think of the others at the most at the time right now but 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 when you encounter these things, you know, that's like, Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Today. Why today? Is because he expected a further away time. And, um, and so let's, let's go to, now we're going to go to, um, Now, now we're going to go to the understanding of paradise, okay? Now, and we're going to also understand why I said that life is in paradise instead of death. Well, John was told that he would not die, okay? The Apostle John, he was told that he would not die before seeing the, com the coming of the Son of Man. So where would he have to go, you know? And I was saying before, like, you know, it's, it's wild that he's roaming this earth. No, I, I, I don't believe that he's roaming this earth. Roaming this earth from, you know, all the generations during bell bottoms and during like, no, I, I just don't believe it. This is what I believe. I believe Revelation 2-7 uh, the church of Ephesus was told, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Okay, so the, the tree of life is in paradise. Okay, scripture says the paradise of God is in the midst of the paradise of God. The tree of life is in paradise. You're not going to be dead in paradise with the tree of life. Scripture tells us time and time. Time again, that the dead go to the grave. Um, what does it have to do with you? Whether he uh, live or, or or die or comes or goes. I'm going 
my phone, but okay. Let's see. Okay. John twenty one twenty two. I'm gonna go there. So John twenty one twenty two says I'm gonna read it in correct context. Okay, so he says, Verily, verily I say unto thee, when thou was young no, that's not it. Okay. 19, verse 19. This spake he signifying by what depth he should glorify God, meaning Peter. Um, So that was in verse 18, but I didn't want to elaborate. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Then Peter turning about, see if the disciples uh, whom Jesus loved, John speaking of himself, not trying to say his name. That's the reason why he would say Jesus loved the one who Jesus loved because he didn't want to say his name, not because Jesus loved him more than anyone else. Um, the one whom Jesus loved following, which also learned on his, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Oh, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Okay. <laughs> and this is funny because, you know, people say, well, God's not a respecter of man. So everybody's in paradise. That's not true. Everybody's not Enoch who walked with God and went with God. Everybody's not um, Elijah who was caught up in um, the, 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 the chariot and, 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 you know, and he was caught up. Everybody's not these people. Everybody's not the two witnesses. Okay. Who, who those might be, okay? John the Apostle. All the disciples died, except for John the Apostle. So, yes, God is not a respecter of man. However, everybody has their own portion in life. Everybody has their own, um, their own destiny. Everybody has their own usage of God. And God has his own special purpose for every individual. You're not going to hear about the city of Jonathan, but you will hear about the city of David. And they were best friends. Glory to God. And both of them were righteous. Okay. Uh, moving on. Um, I mean, I mean, you just have to give room to knowing that God has a special purpose, a special plan, a special uh, opportunity that people have the abilities to receive by God's favor and his grace and, and what he chooses to do in these specific people's lives. And it's not our place. OK, God, I, I heard a lady say this a while back, and I want to repeat this because I believe it's currently uh, for this purpose of video. God is not a God entirely of equality. OK, um, if God was a God of equality. There would be no parents. If God was a God of equality, there would be no older siblings. If God was a God of equality, there would be no preferences. You understand? Like, if God was a God of equality, there would be no advantages that one might have over another. God deals with everyone uniquely, particularly, and designed for his good and perfect will. Okay? African Americans or people of African descent, we have certain privileges that other races don't have by how God made us physically. Um, you have Asians, they have certain benefits and privileges, how God made them, how others don't necessarily entirely reap the benefits of. And the same goes for European Americans and Europeans in general. And the same goes for, you know, um, those of uh, the, the surrounding countries in the Middle East. 
you know, and and all these people have their own special. I mean, look at Israel. Okay, God loved uh, uh, people of different nationalities before Israel. Okay, we must take note of that because you know um, Noah was. I'm not gonna say he was a race because he's the forefather of races. However, he had sons, you know, and he raised these sons. So, you know, it was it's clear and these sons were sons of different nationalities, you understand? And and and, and they all had the favor of God upon them initially at least, except for of course, you know, Ham. But um cursed is Ham and cursed is Canaan rather. Anyway, but 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 I want you guys to understand the drift. You have people who could not enter into um, the tabernacle, okay? People who, you know, but did God love them? Yes, um, they and they couldn't enter the tabernacle. You have certain you have certain uh, tribes in the tribe of Israel that did not have necessarily um, uh, the favor of God upon them as others, okay? Um, even even prophecy was said, okay. Um, you have, and this is the reason why we have a lot of discord and a lot of dissension and a lot of jealousy and a lot of uh, covetousness and anger and you know and things of this nature or, or envy, okay, within mankind because of the uh, you know the eyes looking at upon another person saying what this person doesn't have or what that person doesn't have or what this and, th and this is one of the first sins if you would really reflect with me because when you consider Cain and Abel you would see Cain's way and you would see the way of Abel Abel was focused on what God and him had going on Cain was bitter disgruntled in the cut same thing with Mary and Martha Mary was focused on what she and the Lord had going on. Martha was bitter, disgruntled in the cut. Same thing with Moses. And I would rather say Miriam than including Aaron because Aaron was a real true man of God. Not saying that Miriam wasn't, but Aaron was swayed by Miriam because of her, uh, you know, her 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 disapproval. Of, of of Moses we hear from God as well okay so when you see these things you're seeing complete opposition uh undeserved opposition for Moses because Moses he didn't even want to pick up this mantle to begin with you see um you know because of his speech impediment so now we're, so 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 now we see that the tree of life is in paradise okay now, this same tree of life is spoken of in Genesis 2 9. Okay, let's go there. Genesis 2 9. Okay, Genesis 2 9. Am I there yet? Am I there yet? Am I there? And it reads as such. Now, I'm not going to go without reading the first few verses beforehand because it, it, it's quite necessary in the topic of creation and death and life and resurrection and eternity and forever and you know destinations like hell versus heaven like a fire so let me go there it says right here verse 6 but there were but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust. At this time, the earth wasn't divided. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Why? Because he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, which is the spirit. And man became a living soul. That word breath also is wind. Okay. Spirit. Pneumo. Okay. The breath of life. And man became a living soul. 
as I told you guys in the past. Seed, because now of procreation, seed plus fetus, excuse me, seed plus egg equals fetus. Okay, initially how, initially how uh, mankind was made, flesh from the dirt, which is uh, a formed mannequin, okay, an empty mannequin vessel from the dirt, clay, plus the breath of life equals a living soul, okay? Without that breath of life, you're dead. You're nothing more than, but that, but here's the kicker though, that living soul is not living anymore, but it's still a soul, okay? It did not yet um, become consumed in the fire in the second death, but it is currently lifeless because the spirit left. Okay? You must understand this. This is a clear diagram. And I'm still going to make a diagram of death and life. Just because people need to hear it by itself without everything else. Okay? Um, and I don't mind. I don't mind. I love people to understand. Um, I love getting people to understand. That's, that's, that's my biggest goal out of God using me on this earth. When it comes to the teaching ministry, understanding, okay? Because what did he say? In all you're getting, get understanding. This is the reason why you got people doing so many things without their connection with God. Because they're just doing it because others are doing it. They're saying it because others are saying it. They believed it because others believed it. And I'm going to make a video also explaining why, man. There's a reason why some people believe what they believe, okay? And I'm going to talk about that. I really want to discuss that. And that has to do with um, the marriage doctrine, okay? So you have to have your own connection with God, okay? Because you got some of the people who you look up to who ask God to speak to me first, okay? And, 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 and treated me like they said, uh, I come in the name of, 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 of Jesus whom Paul preaches, okay? And some people sought out God and, and said, God, tell me, you know, uh, what, tell me, uh, speak to Jonathan about the marriage doctrine, okay? No, don't ever do that, okay? You'll end up in a bad situation. You don't want to do that. You want to have your own connection with God. You don't ever want to say, God, you know, tell John. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. You can do you can do this depending on what it is, because brother, my brother Roy said, God, show brother Jonathan that my marriage is from you. And then God showed me. OK, that's a difference. But when it comes to actually theology and teaching and learning and things that you should know from God on your own, because your love and connection with God. No, you have to do your due diligence. OK. So, um, verse eight, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man, and that's a trap if you don't, just wanted to add, and there he put that man whom he had formed and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant. Okay, so hold on. Okay, yeah, tree that is pleasant to the sight. And good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? So the tree of life was once in the garden of Eden. Now let's go to verse 3, verse 22. Same book of Genesis. Okay, chapter 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. To know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand. And take also of the tree of life. And eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden. Till, till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and flaming sword which turned 
every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So once in the times past, the tree of life was guarded by a cherubim, which is a celestial being, okay? A cherubim, which guarded the tree of life, making sure that no one was able to eat thereof, right? With that being said, consider this. Paradise, okay? People say it got moved from the center of the earth, meaning inside of Hades. This is not true, okay? This is not true. This is another reason why um, the parable of Lazarus and the rich man is a parable because you'll never find scripture saying that paradise was literally inside of the earth. So there's no reason, and people debate me with that, and there's no reason to talk about that and say that because there's no scriptures that will ever help you understand that paradise was in the earth. The only thing that the scriptures will show you is that the tree of life was located in the Garden of Eden and that the tree of life is now found in paradise in Revelation 2.7. So there's no need to create anything up because it's just not how things work when you teach you don't create okay you deal with it as it is okay um and the only reason why i'm able to explain um people's uh in out of body experiences is because john explained in out of body experiences paul explained it okay and we're on our way there now but john explained this when john seen the people who were slain Okay, for um, for the faith, these are the same saints who did not get the mark of the beast, did not bow to the image of the beast. Uh, he also saw the 144,000 that are not uh, people who existed then. So he time traveled. And I'm going to also try to really break down how, in that video about the spiritual realm, how time travel is also something that's prophetic. But we make the prophetic so dull and gloomy and dead that we don't even realize time travel for what it is. And we're sometimes we're time traveling in our flesh, in our uh, prayer closet, on our knees, in time travel, in the spirit realm, but not out of the body. And you can also do this out of the body. God is just that wondrous. I'm going to explain testimonies about how my brother was fighting demons for me with a chain, whipping them and beating them up with me. I mean, for me and, 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 you know, doing many things, fighting spirits in the spiritual realm with big chains. You understand? So we have to understand that the spiritual room is way more dynamic than what we're trying to really express. We're trying to make it a small thing and, oh, you know, make it a, a certain set way. The spiritual room is not a certain set way. Let me just let you know that now. If that's the case, people wouldn't just be seeing Hitler in heaven. Okay. So there's a lot of deception in the spiritual realm. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of stages in the spiritual realm. It's like it's almost like Hollywood stages, how they can create a stage and it's like, wow, we're in Egypt, or wow, we're in Russia, or wow, we're in Antarctica. It's like because they could create these stages. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and spirits can do this. I'm not saying all, but I'm just saying in the spiritual realm, these great spirits like Satan and, 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 of, his, and of his caliber, okay, because I know there's different rankings of, of evil spirits as well. They have they have the power to do certain things like this. I don't believe when Jesus was on the top of the uh, pinnacle and he, it says that he saw the whole world. I don't believe he merely just saw the whole world. I believe he saw what the devil wanted to show him because everything that the devil wants to show you is a lie. And I believe that that was another stage, but we ain't going to go there. I don't want to give too much. Glory to God, but moving on. So it says here, um, where are we at? John 21, 22. 
So he says to Peter, saying him to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow me. Then, then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? That's John trying to cover the tracks. But John never died. And um, I can point that to you. Uh, Revelation. I believe that's chapter 11. Because Jesus told him that he's going to have to preach. Wow, it went straight there. Uh, because Jesus told him that he's going to have to um, do more. Uh Um, hold on, let me let me try to Google it, y'all. Be patient with me, please. Um, okay. Ooh. Okay. I believe it's, I got to find it, but he told, John was told to, uh, you know, well, let me go to my other Bible. Because, you know, when you got your other Bible, you'd be knowing it by, just like, it's like a handprint. You just know it. But, uh, John was told, the Apostle John was told to go preach to the other nations. Here it is. It's not it's not that. It's it's John it's Revelation ten. He says, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. That right there also adds that John's not dead. Because how are you gonna prophesy again to many to many um Peoples and nations and tongues and kings and you're just in Param and you're just in Patmos. Okay. You and you're just on the island of Patmos. So that 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 helps us. And that was well, that was Revelation 10 11. That's where I got the eleven from. Okay, so um and that is actually the last verse. Until you get to chapter eleven. So Anyway, yeah, so that that answers that. And, and, you know, I've already made a video, if you guys have never seen it, about how John is still alive. And um, and even Jesus said to him, um, some of you shall not taste death before seeing until... Okay, before I come again, let's see. That's Matthew sixteen twenty eight. Matthew sixteen twenty eight. Okay. Okay, and, and 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 this 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 is to help others. Okay. I want to understand. So it says right here, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I. Oh, twenty eight. It says, verily I say unto you. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Okay? This is the same thing that 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 the that the um it's funny. This is the same thing that that the thief on the cross said, Lord, you know, rememberest thou when you come in your kingdom. You see what I'm saying? This is that future tense, okay? It's that future tense, okay, that didn't occur yet. And he's and Jesus is saying, some of you won't even taste death 
till you see me coming in my kingdom. Okay, this is why he said, no, today you shall be with me in paradise. Okay, and this is the same thing with John. Okay, I believe that I believe now this is me speaking, but I believe I believe that John is in paradise. I believe that that um, Moses perhaps is in paradise, um, even though it does say he died. But I mean, you know, I'm not going to go there because at the same time, he also was uh on the on the uh mount of transfiguration but enoch elijah okay people really died just to let you guys know who wants to debate all over again because i know of people who died and have been resurrected and they have seen nothing when they were dead okay so what are you going to say about that uh these people did not go to heaven these people did not go to hell they were just blank unconscious lifeless so what are you going to say about these people? Okay, these people were really dead. Okay, and these people are Lazarus. These people are Jairus' daughter. These people are um, all these people. Um, uh, uh, Lazarus, Jairus' daughter, the widow's son. None of these people came back with a testimony. They were dead. They, had, they did not give God praise. Did not give God any reverence. Okay, then, and then there's some people that you might know who died. OK, and they they said that they came back and they you know I mean, like there's you can find out this stuff is not hard to find out that there are some people out here who didn't have a real in and out of body experience, but they really died and they did not have nothing to say when they came back. You know what I mean? That's it. So there's there's tons of people with these testimonies. Go search them out for yourself. You know what I mean? And why aren't everybody just going to heaven or hell? That's another question. Because I, I, I told you guys, I know somebody, I know of somebody who died and saw a unicorn and then came right back. Or at least he thought that he died, but he had an out-of-body experience and he saw a unicorn, okay? And he came right back. So, moving on. I mean, you know, he didn't say he was in heaven. He didn't say he was in hell, okay? These are those rims that I'm talking about, okay? Now, 2 Corinthians 12.4. Second Corinthians twelve four. Matter of fact, first let me go to John. Um twenty and sixteen is that um why did I pass that one? Okay. Well, I want to say this br briefly. Also, you're not going to find where it says in scripture that the thief on the cross died. Just to point that out there. I mean, I'm saying that he, you know, his soul uh, released the ghost or anything like that, because that's when you really are also dead is when your spirit comes out of your soul, because you're, you can have an about about experience. I've told you guys countless times, but, you know, um. You're not going to find where it says the thief on the cross died. You're just not going to find it. Um, so, it says here in um, John 20, 16 and 17, Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Why would I read this? Because he said, you shall be with me today in paradise. OK, so this implies that paradise is not where God the father is. OK, now I'm not going to dispute whether it's up. As scripture says, when he says, uh, he says, I know such a man who was caught up. That's 2 Corinthians 4. Okay. 2 Corinthians 4. And I do believe that, um, I'm not going to say that paradise was moved. I'm going to just say that the tree of life was moved. Because there's nowhere in scripture that you can prove that paradise was moved. But there is scripture that you can prove that the tree of life was moved. Okay? 
So, and not only that it, that it was once moved, but it was guarded for a specific reason. Okay, there's no need to guard it now because people who are going to be uh, without death can partake of that tree of life, I strongly believe. I don't believe that there's any restrictions uh, in the things of God. It's just totally yes and amen, amen, without any restrictions that we have now, okay? Um, so, 2 Corinthians, um, and of course, it's always in the will of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 4, it says, well, I'm going to start with verse 3. No, I'm going to start with verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such an one caught up with the uh, such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for me to utter. OK, now I go to that to point to the fact that you're caught up. OK, so clearly you're up. Enoch was up. Uh, uh, Elijah went up. So, you know, um, who am I to say that John didn't go up because he's definitely alive? OK, uh. And clearly, the thief on the cross went up. Okay, so we also see that there was 24 elders uh, in the book of Revelation. Do I know if that's the future or do I know if those people are still currently here? I'm not a master of the spiritual realm. I'm only speaking from the measures of faith that I can speak. Okay, but what I do see clearly is that there is still life. Okay. Um, that these people have and these people are in a different location it's called paradise um, you can restrict some people and say that they're not there okay I won't pull those restrictions okay um, however the only thing that I will restrict is trying to force this upon people as if you know um, as if like you know I cannot learn more. I'm always open to learning more. I sought the Lord and I learned now because previously I did not have this knowledge that I currently have regarding paradise. So right now I'm able to tell you that life is in paradise. The tree of life is there. OK, there are no cherubims needing to guard it there because this is in a totally different spot. OK, this is uh you see, it says the third heaven. I'm not here to say that the paradise is in the third heaven. I'm not here to say that it's not. But what I am here to say is that if it be there, then that's a level of heaven. I don't know how many levels there are. The scriptures have, um, explain in the book of Enoch that there's seven. It's not my place. My place isn't really even as much so much destination as it is the state of the being of a person. OK, um, because I don't even care if paradise was in the center of the the, the, the um, Pacific Ocean. At the end of the day, if it's reserved and stripped away from society and God made it where so nobody can go there, then that's just the bottom line. OK, you can go to many different places, I would believe, on this whole earth and you would have stronger encounters with spiritual beings. And I mean, there's different, you know, um. My sister in Christ was explaining to me how she was seeing, uh, what do they call these? <sighs> That's where the Ninja Turtles come from. And the Kappas, okay, the Kappas, they're in uh, areas where there's a lot of body of water like Japan. They're in areas where there's a lot of body of water like um, the Bahamas, and she's from the Bahamas. And so when you see and when you hear of these things, and these people actually got their chance to see these things, uh, you know, when you're encountering things like this, you know that there, there are hierarchies in the spiritual realm and there, there are uh, great forces and powers uh, and things of this nature. So uh, on the earth even. And um, so, yeah, 
I'm going to really break these things down though, because you'll never see scripture say that demons or evil spirits are tormenting people in, in, in hell. You just, you just don't see these things now. Okay. Yeah. You hear about the earth, the worm, the, the worm, um, the, um, the hell worm or whatever you want to call it and things like that. But when you see these people's testimony, you see a totally different thing. So I want to explain these things. I love you guys in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you guys for your patience. And um, do I have anything else to say? Uh, I just want you guys to understand that paradise is a place where the dead do not go. Okay. Um, the dead do not go to paradise. Jesus, this is the reason why Jesus said, today you shall be with me in paradise. Because this man expected to be dead. And he expected to be dead and just banked on seeing God. Remembering him when he cometh in his kingdom. This is the reason why Jesus said to uh, the disciples that some of you shall not taste death before seeing the Son of Man coming in with his kingdom. You see what I'm saying? So he had to say taste death because some people are going to die and taste death. And death and life are not the same. They are not synonymous you know what i mean you know there's no need to play on day death and life death and life is day and night it's black and white it's nothing there's no gray areas okay so understand that the gray areas if anything is the favor of god when you're given the opportune time to see prophecy manifested before your face and to tell people you know this is what i saw that's the gray area that's the favor of god that you can go back and tell people okay because as abraham was trying to hint even in the parable or jesus rather through abraham ain't nobody coming from the dead able able to tell you jack okay ain't nobody you know ain't no ain't gonna be no believing somebody who came from the dead okay because you can't come from the dead and say that you saw anything. Otherwise, you would be alive. Okay? So, this ain't night of the living dead. And this ain't, um, you know, life after death. Now, the only life after death is life after the resurrection. But don't nobody want to talk about the resurrection. Because they want to talk about it in the sense of a thriller, scary type movie. But the only life after death that's going to be after death is in the resurrection and that resurrection is the Lord Yeshua who said I am the resurrection and so we need to get this resurrection down packed we need to understand what it is we need to understand what life is we need to understand what death is we need to understand um, what the grave has to offer we need to understand what paradise has to offer we need to understand that people aren't currently in heaven with God the Father, um, I mean, I've heard a young man say that he saw God the Father and, and he saw who was on the right side of the throne and the left. Like, these are opportunities that people have to have spiritual encounters and they're very prophetic in what they're seeing, okay? So, I want that to be known, okay? I want that to be known because otherwise... The contradictories that are uh, following these testimonies in scriptures, it's just it's just destroying you. And you don't have no way uh, to not be confused. Otherwise, you'll be like, oh, the physical body doesn't really decompose. It's still there. It doesn't return to the dust for real. Yeah, you'll just be in denial and you'll screw it up and you're not worthy of teaching this. So God bless you. I love you. And, um, you know, I want you guys to understand the diagram and I don't want you guys, uh, because I'm going to tell you something, man, there's sinners out here who know a lot. There's unbelievers out here who know a lot. There's atheists out here who know things. Okay. A lot as well, but they don't know. I'm not going to say they know enough. Otherwise it wouldn't be atheists, sinners and unbelievers, but they know science and Scripture is scientific the right way, not in their scientific mistakes. 
And we don't need to debate about goofy things looking stupid because we want to be extra spiritual. Okay. In all this extra spirituality that we want to talk with, we're wrong. Okay. We're just wrong and we sound dumb and it's embarrassing. Okay. Because sinners are looking at us like, you don't know these things. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how spiritual are you for real? Okay. How in tune with God are you for real? How in tune with God was I for real? There's things that we have to question. Okay. That when you look at the scriptures, you have to question. A lot of people aren't questioning these things. You have to go to John 11. Okay. One through 11. Isn't that one through 11? And he's telling you, Jesus himself is telling you that sleep is dead. Okay. You know, and it's like, how bad are we, are we getting with this thing? Okay. No, it's not one through 11, but it's John 11. Verse 11 through 14. And if you read in verse 11, Jesus says, These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. And he's talking about the sleep of death at this time. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. They were thinking about just resting, like literally the physical body resting. How be it Jesus spake of his death? This is the narrator, John. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then, see, there's two different sleeps, okay? You have the resting of sleep, and then you have sleep of death okay then said jesus unto them plainly lazarus is dead god bless you all in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ